Now, I have to say it's a real pleasure to welcome our next guest to the show. Uh, Debbie Russell is a name familiar to all of you. His first win, just to make him feel old for a moment, first win as a professional jockey was in November 2002 at Sedgefield. So 20 years and 1,400 winners later, it's been quite the career. Irish champion jockey three times, 2012, 2013, 2018. He will be forever synonymous with Tiger Roll, Grand National winners together in 18. And then, incredibly, again in 19, it was Red Rum Territory. Uh, You throw in the Gold Cup at Cheltenham, and that was quite the partnership. And that is not to mention many other great days. The Irish Gold Cup on Sir Deschamps in 2013. There was the 2014 Cheltenham Gold Cup as well and Lord Windermere. Uh, Post-war, post-World War II, Davy fourth on the list of winning jockeys at Cheltenham which is uh, an extraordinary achievement. So a legendary career and no stranger, like all of his colleagues really, to the inevitable dangers of the game. Davy suffered a broken neck in 2020. I think many of us presumed that would mark his retirement, but he was determined to go out on his own terms and he did just that. 18th of December, just gone, uh, just over two weeks ago at Thurless. At the age of 43, he announced his retirement fresh from a final winner aboard Gordon Elliott trained Liberty Dance. And so... He starts 2023, aged 43, at the beginning of a whole new chapter. Davy Russell, great to have you on Off the Ball. Thanks so much for the time, Davy. Uh, thank you. Thanks, John. Why did you retire? <laughs> um, sure, look, I, I, I've kind of been retiring for a number of years now. Well, people have been retiring me, you know, since I got to fall. Um, I was always going to be on borrowed time. Do you know what I mean? And then to pick the right time of the year. So there's no good time of the year to retire. It's just you retire and that's it. And especially in our game, you know, it was coming up to Christmas. I've I, a lot of young kids, uh, you know, a busy house. And if I didn't do it at Christmas, you know, if I didn't do it now, there's always a sort of Dublin Racing Festival. And then you move on to Cheltenham and then you move on to Aintree and then you go to Punchestown and everybody's saying, why are you doing it now? Why are you doing it now? And just God, it just keeps rolling on and rolling on. So I just said to Gordon there, look, come here. I was happy to go and uh, he was happy to 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 let me go out in the winter, you know. So And it took a couple of days, actually, because uh, of the frost and things. A couple of meetings were called off and... I had an awful lot of very good rides over that I couldn't uh, I couldn't take, but um, yeah, it was just the way it went. Is your riding in decline or as good as ever? No, I, I, well, I don't think so, but I, I was definitely riding a lot less than what I was. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to ride six or seven rides a day to the full of my potential um, or to what is expected of a professional jockey. So I had cut down on the numbers per day but I was doing that really well and I was really, really enjoying it. And I actually could have, go, I could have done that for a lot longer. But unfortunately, when you're a, a professional sports person, but it's a professional jockey anyway, you kind of need to be a 100% every and picking and choosing and, you know, going here and going there. It doesn't really work. You need to be, well, I need to be a hundred percent invested in the whole thing. And I just, you know, I just wasn't able to do that anymore, you know. So was that tiredness? Like when you get onto the third or fourth or fifth ride of a day, what was what was not quite working the way it should? It was old age. <laughs> um, not so much tiredness, but it was just my body, the soreness. I was just sore, you know. I, look, I've been sore for nearly 25 years now and, and uh, it never stopped me before, but and it wouldn't have stopped me the only way it wouldn't have stopped me if I was picking and choosing and taking the two or three rides a day. You know, I would have I would have dealt with the pain, uh, but I just I just couldn't keep going. And I needed to, as I said, I needed to be 100 percent involved. And, you know, I live a long way from everywhere as in where garden trains and all of that. And you must remember, like it, it's it's, you know, if I'm not gone out of the house a minute before five, I'll be late for work. So. I need to be gone at five. Then you need to do a full day's work. And, you know, we might now finish in garden, get off the last horse. It could be half one if we were working horses or it could be a bit later if we were taking horses away to work, which generally happens. And then I have a kind of a two and a half, well, a three hour journey home. 
Um, and then you have to set yourself up for the next day's race. And, and that's fine when you're a young lad, you bounce off them things. And I loved, I loved all of that. Uh, I loved driving and I loved being in the car on my own, going places and going new places. But, you know, when it takes, you know, you're six hours in a car and then you have to do a day's work and then you have to go home and, you know, four young kids and a, and a beautiful wife and it's hard then for me just to lie off on the couch. You do it when you're single or, you know, when you have a girlfriend or whatever mm. and you have no other responsibilities, you know, you can do that. You can just throw yourself down the couch and go to sleep for half an hour, but Lily and Finn don't, <laughs> aren't going to give you that half hour. You know what I mean? They, they want to ride their ponies and they want to go and, you know, they're full of energy and I don't want to slow them down either. You know what I mean? I don't want to set them back. I want to, them to keep going that way, you know? Yeah. So it's just, it, they're, they're the choices, you know? Yes, of course. And so, because I figured there were always probably uh, certain aspects of the job that just took a toll, be it making weight or the grueling schedule, as you describe it there. And it, it, it's those aspects which hasten the decision as opposed to, Geez, I've fallen out of love of riding a horse or, or like, you know, I'd say you still love the, the competitive juices flowing in a big race, but it's it's everything you have to do to get onto that track. That's it. And, and it's, it's hard to explain it. And it's hard to explain to someone that, you know, you're telling them that you love doing it. So then you just do it. And, and I'm that kind of a person, just do it. And I would have done it, but I wasn't able. I just my physically and mentally wasn't able. I was... Do you know what? I, I was even getting a little bit cross at home as well. And I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to, and I didn't want to then fall out of love with racing or get a bad fall. Not the fall didn't bother me. I wasn't afraid of the falls. I was never afraid of the falls, but I didn't want all the tiredness to creep up and creep up and creep up. And all of a sudden just throw your toys out of the tram and say, look, I hate this. I want to go. And then it'll never happen the way you want it to happen. Do you know what I mean? When you're in that. So it was beautiful that I could just let it flow away. I was, I really, really enjoyed the last couple of months racing. I, I was, I was like, I was, I was, I was riding, you know, free. Like, do you know what I mean? I was loose and I, I, I couldn't, I, I found it hard to make a mistake now, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's just amazing. And there was different parts of my career when I rode like that as well, but not a hundred percent from start to finish. And uh, but I, I definitely rode the last couple of months. I, I was at my very best. I, I, I thought or close to it anyway. You know, yeah, that's interesting. Almost uh, doing something for enjoyment brings out the best in you, even though you probably yeah. spent most of your career or some of your career thinking I almost need to be a bit grouchy and have a bit of an, a bit of an edge about me. Yeah, you do think that. And I did think it. And I thought that was the way to go. I needed a bit of an edge and I didn't want to be too nice. And people, you'd be walking around the parade ring, you'd hear, um, um, hear people chanting, you know, t you know, wishing you well. But I didn't want to make eye contact with you. I, I just didn't want to smile. And, 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 you know, I took an awful lot. You watch different sports and I took an awful lot. Oh, forgive me, his name um, just catch me. The Dublin footballer, he's a doctor. Brilliant footballer. I would think you don't. Jack McCaffrey would smile in the parade. Holy God, I, I was watching and I was saying, how can he do it? You know what I mean? Not in a good way or a bad way. I'm very much open to every man to his own. You know what I mean? But he smiled. And I used to, I used to do it without smiling, but I used to take everything in. I could see every horse. I'd watch every horse walking around. I could see, I would... I would look to where the start is before I wouldn't just set out and then find where the start was. I would look from a distance to where exactly I'm going and the shortest and safest and easiest point to get to that. Cause sometimes there are different routes you can get to the start. Um, and I used, I used to look, I used to take the wider, wider view when I was on a horse. I didn't not, not the people, the people, I, I never took any notice of the people. And sometimes I felt, you know, there'd be young kids and they'd shout your name and you just love to turn and give them a thumbs up. I did later, but the last couple of months I did. I did, I'd, you know, because I, 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 I the, the kid in me would have got so excited yeah. for that. And I love to see the, the joy in children, especially when they're watching a sport that 
you love so much, you know? Yeah. So you're almost stopping to smell the roses and your performance was yeah. better as a result. I mean, it, it, it's, it's one of the great things. And so many sports people talk about the exact experience uh, you're talking about. I mean, that even tallies with, and you've talked about it before, so we don't have to spend much time on it, but that even tallies with, you definitely had a period early on in your career where the way you were making weight was turning you into a bit of a tyrant at times, understandably, because you were starving yourself. And also maybe that period where, you know, you'd been runner up champion jockey, I think five times and, 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 and Garrity had a couple at that stage and Ruby had eight and you were chasing them down. And, and there was such an intensity off you and a kind of everything off you. Um, and, and you got into a sweet spot, I think maybe a bit later on as well around your, your peak years, but, but that, that kind of, that tyrant aspect, I, it's just a natural thing. People have to go through it. And you went through it even with your weight amongst other things. Yeah, it's 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 very difficult to explain it. But as I said, when when I when I closed the gate of the race course behind me, I was a totally different person, you know. But it was like when I stepped inside, oh, fuck, you know, I, I I I could I could I just had no time, no nothing, just one thing. That was it, and. I don't regret doing it because I realized that there was another side to it and I enjoyed it. But I also, I deep myself, I enjoyed it an awful, an awful lot, even that I was in bad form, but I just loved doing it. But the only thing I regret is that the people, I didn't bring people with me on the journey. Do you know what I mean? Like another person I, 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 I just love watching is, is Shane Lowry and he brings everybody on the journey with him. But I was unable to do that. Like, I couldn't bring my wife to Cheltenham while I was riding. No, she went and she'd done her own thing. But I couldn't bring her to Cheltenham because I just wasn't able to separate the riding, the race, and the concentration, the getting up in the morning and someone then coming in wanting... I, I have no problem with them having the good time, but they're wanting to have a good time. It's it's a it's a it's a a leisurely time for them, but it's not for me. So, but I couldn't separate the two. I couldn't work the two in together. You know, it just yeah. wasn't in me. Some people can, but I I just think. But I, I still, even if it was this year, I couldn't cope with someone coming to Cheltenham with me. Like the people I stayed with in the, in the house with people over there. But they understood, well, I hope to do Well, the main couple of people understood if there was people coming and going mm. and they were wondering what was wrong with me, then, you know, I, 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 I don't know. But the people that were with me, my friends, they understood, yes. you know, it just didn't bother with me. I have to be honest. I love that about you. I love Jack <laughs> McCaffrey in the parade as well. I really do. I love someone who's feeling that intense about it and it's that important to them that, everything else is unimportant and and it, it's weird that you even know it's a little bit ridiculous but that's just the way it is it's the way I have to be there's something very compelling about those types of sports people I always think um your broken neck in November 2020 you were on Dr Duffy fractured C6 and C7 dislocated T1 as it's funny you know when Tiger Woods was in that car crash uh, one of the lines from the um, reporting was that he has life-changing injuries, life-changing injuries. That That is a phrase nobody wants to hear. It's one of those medical terms. I was reading the, I mean, not surprisingly, broken neck, but you were pretty close to life-changing injury. Yeah, it was literally a brilliant surgeon, um, fabulous surgeon, and he just small little nuggets along the way. He just kept on feeding me little bits of information that... You know, gave me, I suppose you could take it whichever way you want. But like he said, 90%, he said, you're in the 10% bracket. And I said, okay. He said, yeah, only 10% with your injuries walk out of here. He said, you're in 10%. And I love that, obviously. Um, some people, I don't know what way you take it, but I took it well. Um, um, and... It was just one of them things, the vertebrae, the cord goes down through it and the vertebrae broke that way instead of that way. And that was it. It was just it, it, the vertebrae broke back out and instead of coming into the cord, it broke away from the cord. And that was it. 
and I was so lucky you now because it was my neck, so it was it was going to be from there down, um, and um, um, that was it. That was it. I, I just um, yeah. and I'm sure, I'm, thought, sure I'm sure you know jockeys who've it, it's broken uh, the other uh, way. Unfortunately, yeah, John Thomas was a brilliant man. Um, we soldiered together for so long, and he was unfortunate for the, the other one. You know what I mean, and then. It hit me a little bit hard when uh, Robbie McNamara was in the same bed that I was in, and he was unfortunate. He, he's he's he wasn't as lucky as I was. Um, he, so he's he's in in a wheelchair, and um, so that was you have a, I had a choice then. You know, I was lucky, very lucky, and I was going to try and make the most of being lucky. Do you know what I mean, D- Davy? At that point, if I'm if you know your wife or your father or or anyone says listen mate that's it now like that's the ultimate warning shot you've dodged it like there's not there's not, a, not a chance you're going back in a horse there's not a chance look everybody to them to their own if 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 i was if someone was telling me what to do all through my life or if anybody is telling you what to do all through your life, you've got to do your own thing you'll be your own person and make up your own mind now I never asked Adele because I didn't have to ask her because she she was happy with everything. Do you know what I mean? And mm. she she was close because I was telling her all these things about you know. My surgeon said that you know your 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 neck is stronger now than what it was before you got to fall. You know the vertebrae refused to get her and there was steel in there and all that carry on. You know, so I was I thought that was great. <laughs> that it was stronger now than it was before. So you know um. And look, look, my dad is, he's a marvellous man and he'd never open his mouth. Like my dad would tell you, Jiz, you, you know, you're not writing great there. You'd, you, you'd want to consider packing it up there. And that was about 10 years ago. So I got, I got, I got 10 years on that one. Um, so. Um, and, and were you close to thinking maybe it is time to leave it at that or you, you, I'm surprised you don't even lose your nerve a touch. You know that bravery on a horse that you need that that doesn't go either with age or with a, mo- a moment like that. No, no, I never look. Once the doctor said I was okay, that was one thing. And then um, there was a load of different things. I was getting headaches, and I couldn't flex my neck back to see everything in front of me when I was riding with my back that way. So I couldn't get my neck fully back. And I needed to get that back. Now, the only way I was going to get that back was a lot of work. Now, it took a lot of work, physios, weightlifting, loads of different things. A brilliant physio, Sean Deegan in, in Clonmel, like went above and beyond, like Jennifer Pugh, above and beyond to get me back. And But I wanted, even till the day I rode, I, I wanted to think I was riding or I was getting back to ride to be a hundred percent because I didn't want to walk around a place with a stiff neck and you know, that was that, but I, I wanted to get back a hundred percent and then decide. So okay. literally the morning of declaration for Don Patrick, I used to be schooled half a dozen horses each myself and Jack and George might've been there or someone. And, and um, we schooled and it just went like that. Just clicked every one of them bang straight down not a foot wrong I was 100% I didn't interfere with any horse I wasn't afraid I was nothing you know and that was it I just said God declare me on them yokes there and I didn't I'd be honest with you I don't put a lot of thought into things right it's all on feel everything I've ever done has been through feel whether it's a horse whether it's whatever it is it's it's and And has that served you well well, a bit of both. <laughs> sometimes it's good, and some if you see me dropping out of you, it served me well in the Gold Cup, and and it might have worked the other way in another race. Do you know what I mean? But and but like I just got felt right, and I just said, "Garden here, declare me there away there in, in Down Patrick," and he was looking at me as if I had ten heads, but I was ready to go, and that was it, and I wanted to go, and I didn't want to listen to anybody, I didn't want anybody's opinion because. The doctor said, the surgeon said, work away. The doctor said, work away. And that's all. And obviously Adele and we're, we're 
fully behind me. So mm-hmm. I just, I didn't want anything else. I didn't want yes. anybody to think they're tough in sport. Now, I don't mean that in any way. I just didn't want it. I didn't need it. If I fell on my first ride back and, and that was it, it was my own fault. I didn't want anybody to tell me, I told you so. Across your career, were you superstitious? Were you religious? Did you pray to something? No, I wasn't religious. Um, superstitious, I put on my right boot first. That's about that's about as superstitious yeah. as I get. And when I tried to put on my left boot first, it just doesn't feel right. <laughs> to be honest, whatever it is. And I'd often go down, make a shape to put on. And I'd say, no, it just, it just didn't feel right. I don't know what it is. <laughs> And I couldn't use my left hand for a lot, of the, a lot of, for when I was a young lad. And I, Ted Walsh told me the simplest thing. It was so easy. He said, for four days, he said, I want you to pick up things with your left hand. I want you to tie your shoelaces with your left hand. I want you to pick your nose with your left hand. Whatever you do, open the door with your left hand, close it with your left hand. He said, in four days time, you'll be able to use your stick in your left hand. And it was as easy as that. I you saw know. you described as a, a natural horseman in the um, various tributes paid to you. I, 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 I was going to say, by all means, take take this answer wherever you want to go. I, I don't know if anyone's natural at anything because they tend to work hard from a young age. But um, I remember talking to Ruby Walsh and he said that one of his gifts, he didn't use the word gift now, but you take the point. One of his gifts was he, he could pace a race like nobody's business. He could time out the furlongs almost to perfection. And he was over in the States as a young rider and really learned that craft. I know you styled yourself a little bit on Richard Dunwoody and uh, tried to ride with a bit of style. Um, would you class yourself as a natural horseman? What What was your gift, if you had a gift? It wasn't pace, anyway. I, I, I understand and I agree with what Ruby was very... He was very technically minded. Um, um, or that's the feeling I got off him. You know, he was... He was and I used to love to upset that. Because I, 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 I just had a thing in my head that if you ran the engine in neutral for as long as you possibly could, then the pick up and go might last a bit longer, if you know what I mean. And that was the one thing that I used. It was the first thing that I, when I once my bum sat in the saddle, if 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 I needed to get a horse to relax, I, I'm I'm a wicked thing with horses breathing, with a horse taking breaths and relaxing uh, and relaxing and and getting into a rhythm, and that's probably what I based a lot of things on um, was relaxed and I just love horses jump better. Um, horses enjoy it better and I think there is more improvement after a run from when they do that there's no science to riding a horse because you look out and look at A.P. McCoy he never lets go the, the the bit is always high up in a horse's mouth so once he gets on a horse he's in charge You, that's it you're going where he's telling it to go when I got up I, I was happy enough to trust the horse you know I, I, I just I was happy enough to just Throwed a lot at him. That that, you know, that almost sounds like a real almost respect for the, the horse and like a, a a genuine relationship with the horse as opposed to, this horse is like a tool of my trade and it will bend to my will. Yeah, I it never worked for me, and I did try it. I often tried. I tried loads of different things. The same way a golf, a golfer would try different swings or. Uh, whatever a hurler would try different boots or whatever i don't know what it is um yeah. but i tried to grab a hold of horses and but it just wasn't it wasn't the one that i was comfortable with and i always loved i just loved and to be honest i've often i often got criticism for the way i rode because i used to leave it to him and leave it fine and late at times and often too late and you know, it's just, it's just what I was happiest doing, and there was no point in me doing it unless I was happy doing it. So I just so, so like, doing it. And again, I'm not a, I'm not a, a massive racing fan, so I couldn't, I couldn't look at the various styles of jockeys and 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 deduce who's doing what really. But so would would the accusation at times have been, 
Jeez, David Russell's sitting that horse, he's doing nothing on it. Like, yeah. get on with it, man. Yeah. And and then, would you believe, uh, for a stage, with with these new rules and not trying and all of this carry on, I used to, I used to, to try and bow to them. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the madness behind you. <laughs> oh, yeah, he'll, he'll give that a go now for a while. Um, so, um, uh, I tried to, I, I thought, I, I tried to just keep them happy. I might take a horse off the bridle a bit earlier. Uh, knowing well that I can't go one mile an hour faster. There's nothing I can do that yeah. this horse is going as hard as he can. He's trying his best. He's doing everything the way I wanted to do it. But visually, it may not have looked like that. And then I thought, I'm going to get in trouble here with all these new rules and you have to do this and you have to do that and you have to do the other. And then that wasn't working. I wasn't going to do that. And and, and to be fair, I actually never got in trouble. I, it was all in my head thinking this, you know. Um, so I just kept riding. But I could often ride a horse. I would rather, I would take a decision kind of a third of the way into the race that... I may not win it. I'm com- I don't think I'm going to win it. But what I can do is I could nick second. Okay. And I made a huge life out of nicking seconds and thirds and fourths and things like that. You know, whereas that if I went after them or took them off the bride any bridle any earlier, not alone I may not finish placed, but I might finish t- tenth or yes. I could pull up. But if you wait long enough and let someone else go, you know, let someone else take their horse off the bridle, let them burn their juice, you'll nick them late on. Do you know what I mean? So would you have been regarded then as a pretty good tactician by your peers? No, no, no. I, 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 tactics to me. Because that's, I'm sorry, I, I would interpret what you described there as tactics. Oh, well, <laughs> well, I didn't. I just interpreted it as trying to get the most for the, people that own the horse and uh, do you know what I mean and that's yeah. really what I always intended doing because you must remember like there's prize money for first second third fourth and fifth so the prize money for second is more than it is for fifth so yeah. my decision early would be to get or well first anyway to win the race to start it but if I didn't feel that I could win the race I'd love to be nicking second do you know what I mean I'd love to be getting being a professional getting, almost yeah and yeah, or anyway, but that didn't always come across visually to the public. Interesting. And I understand too, because I'm sitting at home watching race now and I'm saying, Jesus, you could have been harder on him or you could have done this, you could have done that. And it's so easy to fall into that trap. Yeah. You know, of 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 because uh, it's it's when you're not on it or in it or seeing exactly like we could jump off in a race and we would be absolutely flying. Now we'd be going a right good gallop. And next thing you look at the replay and you'd be thinking, Jesus, they're not going, it doesn't look like we're going as quick as we actually were. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's hard to get the actual speed. I like these, the side on camera, these, um, these Jeep camera, the camera going is, is I think it's a brilliant issue. That, that is one of the main reasons I fell in love with race racing was back in the day they used to have one in ascot and them different race courses and you'd see desert awkward side side um views of the, of the car driving alongside the race of desert Ark jumping and things i think it's a much better um to to relate to, to people watching back to what what's actually going on you know 1979 is an amazing year for irish racing we have davy russell born y'all county cork we have ruby walsh up in kill county Clare. And we have Barry Garrity, Pelletstown, County Mead, all within a few months of each other. Like if Malcolm Gladwell ever writes the book, I'm sure he'll figure out what you all had in common or what was in the water or what was going on around then. Were they more rivals or were they more friends? Um, um, very much respected in every way, shape and form. Um, very easy to get on with when I went, when, when I was in their company, but wouldn't really have rang them up for a drink now. Do you know what I mean? So it, it all depends what you call a friend, but definitely not an enemy or a, or a nemesis okay. or, you know, like that. There wasn't a coldness. There wasn't, I'm not speaking to him as we, as we go for champion jockey in two months time. 
No, 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 no. And myself and Ruby got that out of the way very fast and I'll never forget it. I was blowing the stole and I done something wrong. I done something wrong somewhere. I didn't know I'd done it, whatever. And next thing, we're turning into the straight and maybe going to finish fourth or fifth, you know, and not going to win the race. But Ruby absolutely clung me to the railing. Now, boot, did, 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 up along the railing and you know that was grand I pulled up and I said what was that about and he said no he says that's it leave it there never again so we went into the steward's inquiry and I didn't you know n- not that I, I I didn't force the issue that I was after getting badly interfered to put it that way you can't really tell them a lie because it's there visually on the screen what exactly what happened. So you, there's another way, there's loads of different ways you can approach it. I could say, I'm going, I'm going to say, look, he absolutely done that on purpose. I felt my life was in danger. You can go in different ways, but he clung me to the rail. No need for it. You know, I didn't, I wasn't doing anything out of the way. He just came out of his way to absolutely nail me. And I was there. Jesus, that was a bit uncalled for. Well, it wasn't it wasn't exactly like that. I walked him blind and he said he said we went into the steward. We didn't really talk after during the incident, after the incident, it just didn't talk, didn't talk outside the steward's room. I went in, he said his piece, I said my piece. I didn't go in nailing him to the cross now, it's just not my way. And next thing, um he got actually got suspended. Uh, I think got suspended for a day or something for careless riding, something silly like that. And he walked out and he shook my hand. He says, "No, he says that's it. That's where we leave it." And ever since that day, then we were straight as a die, never a problem. Right? Yeah, yeah. And it was a good way to deal with it, and it was dealt with. And we both, I, I had done something wrong. He had done something similarly wrong, and we. Both like men shook hands and that was it. I never really felt I had that kind of a run in with anybody else. Do you know? I never, but I was never, as you said, going for a championship nip and tuck, mm. you know, things like that with anybody else. So, but with Ruby, yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was nip and tuck, but never, never did the, did that get in the way, probably because of that incident, you know, in the storm. Uh, something uh, a moment in your career which was talked about a lot at the time and and I, i'm curious what effect it had on you was michael o'leary at punchestown in 2013 bringing you for the cup of tea to tell you listen you're not our main guy anymore after six very good years uh together that could torpedo a career or torpedo confidence or I, it could result in you saying well go f yourself and, and never riding for him again in any capacity and uh, none of that happened uh and a year later on lord windermere you win the gold cup as well so, uh, why? What effect did that have on you? Like, like, why? Why did that not um, halt you in a in a massive way? Or may, maybe it was a bigger struggle for you than than we realized on the outside. Uh, it was a struggle, but the one thing I realized was that without Chiggins Town, I had no chance. Do you know what I mean? Or definitely a lesser chance of 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 riding very talented horses in very top races. So that came into my mindset fairly quick that I need to shut my mouth here. Okay. Um, Cause you would have been then, tempted to say, well, F you and up and turn around and go. I would be the one of the absolute first people to do it all my life. And for some reason, I don't know why I didn't do it, but I look, I was after getting older and wiser and okay. all of that. Um, I just said, well, I, I I didn't take it that well now. I wasn't exactly, you know, jumping around the place. Okay. And uh, Ruby is a bright fella. I remember him saying it to me after, too. He was a very bright fella. And, you know, he, was, he, he he said something to me after. But um, I left a couple of fucks out of me in the, in the, when we were having it. Uh, so I asked him, is there anything I can do right here to change the situation? And he said, none. Right. So that was grand. And then he asked me to go and talk to the press. And I said, I'm not fucking talking to oh, Sorry. Um, sorry. <laughs> yeah, go on. I'm not talking to any press. I said, this is your decision. I said, you deal with it. 
I said, it has nothing to do with me. And I walked away. I still had two rides left on the day yeah. for him. And the last thing he said to me going off, and I never forget it, and it's amazing even with a jockey, is the last thing he said, now he says, off you go with him. And I said, you prove me wrong. And Interesting. They were the last words that he said to me. And I said, I will do such. I will definitely do that. Okay. So it's um, fuel. So when you when you ride Lord Windermere a year later at the Gold Cup, do, no. so in your is there have a bit of that, Michael? Is that on your mind? No, 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 <laughs> no. I was just actually when I sat in the car after. Now I went into my seat and I had the same seat and punched on. It was in a corner and the colours would often be in behind me and I sat in the seat. And I just stare at the wall and someone said something to me or people would be talking to you and I just went straight through me, you know, another, never, nothing registered with me. I was just absolutely in shell shock. And um, Ruby actually said it to me after. He says, I didn't, he says, you know, I knew there was something wrong with you, but, you know, obviously when I came out in the press, then, you know, that, that, um, that, that's why I was, I just went hollow for 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 a, a couple of minutes. But um, <clears throat> uh, the one thing I did say to myself sitting in the car, oh no, sitting in the wear room was, I'll not win a gold cup. You know what I mean? Jiggins was your would, best chance. Yeah. 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 And so it's a devastating um, moment. It was. It was. If if you know, it, it was tough because you see. You must remember, like, I used to go to Leperstown at Christmas time, not Limerick or not Down Royal. Uh, I used to go to Cheltenham. I used to go to Aintree. I used to go to Punchestown. If there was two, a double meeting on, I'd be at the grade one meeting riding for them. Mm -hmm. When you're not riding for them, you could end up at the second meeting. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. and it's the great it's the it's the main meeting you want to be at do you know so what you, I mean? you you were in, you were entitled to think this is my career taking a seriously bad direction at that point yeah but i i didn't write i actually wrote one on the horse that he that that i got off and i didn't between me winning on that horse and him talking to me eight minutes later i i, I didn't become a bad jockey so and we also had racing in Tremor the next day. So um, I had rides down there. I'm not actually sure the ride for them uh, was I actually declared on a horse to ride for them. So, but I wasn't sure. But I actually rode two winners the next day. So I was lucky if there was a gap of a week with no racing, or if I struggled for the next four, five, or eight, ten, twelve days to get rides. Yeah, it might have had a different effect on me. But luckily enough, I was the, we were racing the next day, and I think I rode two winners the next day. And I rang Jim Cullerty, and I don't know. Again, he the first thing he said to me was, "Oh, that's brilliant news." <laughs> and I said, "Is it?" Jim? <laughs> so it's not that brilliant. He says, "Well, it is for me." He says, "Because I could commit to Lord Windermere for the season." He says, "Oh, fantastic news!" And other people then said, "Look, now you'll be available." to ride more horses for us and all of a sudden like there was you're back now again yes. I only rode, I didn't ride I was riding you know 120 odd winners to 90 80 winners you know somewhere between 75 and 130 winners a year down to I think 28 or something so that's 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 a fair drop but I was still busy, you know, and I was still riding, getting Charles Burns is a great man, and Gordon was still using me and things yeah. like that. We can't talk about everything, obviously. These kind of extraordinary years, 2018 season, for instance, you have 119 winners, you're the leading jockey at Cheltenham, and of course there's Tiger Roll in the Grand National. At 38, you're the oldest jockey in the race. At 15.2 hands, he's the smallest horse. It's not meant to go that way. It does. And there's 2019 as well. Um, like the, the, that kind of 18 and then, you know, geez, your record at Cheltenham continues 06 to 20. I think it was only in 2019 you didn't win a race at Cheltenham one year. And as I said, only four of, you know, you're fourth on that list of, of most winners post um, World War Two. That's from 06 to 20. But those kind of years with Tiger Roll, they've kind of turned your excellent career into 
whatever you w- word you want to use, but it's kind of a legendary career now. You like it's 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 elevated it to kind of a a level that that must be very satisfying. As you retire, you must retire a, a much happier man, a more satisfied sports person. These these couple of years laid on. Uh, yeah, I, I I would think so. It's 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 like it's like Joe Canning getting an All Ireland medal. Yes, Do you know what I mean. Um, there's no doubt about it. But Joe Canning was probably one of the all time greats that we'll ever see. But when he won the All Ireland medal, it just seemed that you, no matter what conversation you put him into as one of the greatest hurlers, they say, "Ah, he never won an All Ireland." Yes. He did, he did, mm-hmm. and you know, you said about seventy nine, and 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 Barry uh, won a Grand National, and Ruby won two, and then AP, you think would save you for not if yeah. you know the greatest of all time. Yeah, he did win a Grand, National, and next thing he goes and wins a Grand National. So. In my own head, and people tell you, and you know, it's great. And I rode with them, and they're brilliant jockeys. And I don't think I, I, I'm not saying that I was as good as them or as better than them or whatever, but I, they didn't have a whole load on me, <laughs> if you know what I mean. In my own head, like yeah. they, they didn't have nobody could say, ah, look, Ruby won this and Ruby won that, and he did, and he was brilliant, but. Not a whole load, do you know what I mean? Do you know if when you're looking at grand nationals and things like that, and it's just when you win it, you just think, yeah, do you know it's just kind of, oh, it's hard to speak about yourself winning things. You know, it's it's not easy, but the feeling, uh, it just makes you belong. Do you know yes. what I mean? It makes uh, makes you belong. You can write all the winners and you can have all the numbers. And don't get me wrong, AP is you know phenomenal what he done but I'd say if you asked him like it wouldn't have mattered if he retired without it but he didn't he retired with the national and it was just a, it was just a cherry on top like you know well it's 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 your it's your legacy it's it's uh, in the long and distant future it's the first line of your obituary yeah yeah and if you walk down the street I remember as a young lad uh, people asked me did you ever ride in the Grand National and 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 at the time, it's in, you know, did, what do you do? I'm a jockey. Oh, do you ride? Did, have you ridden in the Grand National? It's in, no. And next thing, you, the same question when you do ride, you know, what do you do? I'm a jockey. Have you ever ridden the Grand National? I have, actually. I've ridden, ridden it every year. And next thing, they say, did you win it? And I'd say, no. <laughs> and next thing, for the next 15 years, you say, no. And all of a sudden, you're waiting for someone to say, what do you do for a And I'm a jockey. Do you ride in the Grand National? I did. And then you're waiting. Have you ever won it? I have, yeah, twice. Do you know you're... <laughs> It's just, uh, it's just, it's great. Like it's a marvelous race, and it touches so many people. And um, Liverpool, I don't, I'm not sure it'll work anywhere else. I don't know. It's, it's Liverpool is a special place. It's, mm. it's, uh, and and it's so unique. Like you can't, you can never replicate it. Like you know. Can I bring up something you you won't love me for bringing up, but I, I bring it up <laughs> very respectfully anyway. Um, because I I get the sense uh, watching you from afar that you really love horses, and I've seen you even in a video you did with Jer a couple of months ago, and you were down and showing the horses you had, and your kids are on horses and and ponies, and and so there's a real love of the animal. They're not just the tools of your trade, is my sense of you. So that controversy that blew up around Tremor 2017, the punch to the back of the horse's head, King's Dolly, um. Do you feel that was misinterpreted by the general public? Do you feel hard done by there? What's your perspective on that now? And and even the fact that I bring it up as we're glanced, looking back on your career, it's it's it registered with people. If you asked me this at the start of the interview, were you afraid I wouldn't do the rest of the interview, is it? <laughs> Cross my mind. Cross my mind. It was a disgrace what I'd done. Right? And there is no excuse. So but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make an excuse for it. And well, I, I'm going to tell you the, re- yeah, yeah. The, the, the reasoning for it. And again, like it's a very dangerous situation when you're on a horse. And I was going down to the start, which is a downhill run in Tremor. In Tremor so it's opposite to what you're watching on the telly. You're going up the hill to the finish. So I'm going down. Now, this yoke is running completely out of control, you know, um, I've no control over. Um, there's a jeep 
to my right, there's a, you know, the stanchion that the, that the starter stands in. Oh, sorry, that was to my right and the jeep was to my left. And then there's the show hurdle in front of me. So I'm hauling her back, get no response whatsoever. She's not listening to anything I'm telling her to do. She's running blind down to the hurdle. And um, not to say she frightened me, but when you're not in control or something like it's 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 a funny feeling like i i had no control of what was going to happen so she could either run straight into the jeep or hit the stanchion or when they're running that blind you go down to the practice room so i'm i'm getting madder with this yo. you know i'm i'm getting madder because she's not listening to me and next thing i get her pulled up right at the show hurdle and you see her she nearly goes out over it and I I I I I had an outburst and 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 I didn't want to hit her. I had a stick, big stick in my hand, so I could have hit her two thumps and nobody would have said anything to me. Do you know what I mean? It was but I didn't um she wasn't paying attention to me, so I just done that and holy God above do I regret it. And what I probably should have done was give her a pat. And and calmed her down, but I didn't. I was so mad that for them couple of minutes, I was completely out of control, and I was so mad with her. Whether she probably did frighten me, she probably did frighten me, and it's very hard for a jockey to say that he was that he got a fright, but that frightened me. And it's the one of the things that would frighten me is when you lose control of this because you're going fast on a on a on an animal, you know, so. I probably got a fright and that's what my reaction was to my fright. And that was it. Um, that was it. Now, people's reaction. Look, the person that put it up, they I don't think they intended in. They just saw something and said, look what David Russell have done. You know, I've no issue with that. Yeah. I have no problem with people's response to it. Um, and it was wrong, so I had to. Whatever your response was, that's your that that's your response, and and that was it. And and I had no defense. I was I was I was guilty, and that was it. And I couldn't um, say that anybody was wrong. But where people were wrong was when they mentioned outside of what I done. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What what I done is what I done. I take and I took full responsibility for responsibility for it. And I shouldn't have done it. And yeah. I hope that people would, you know, that you just learn from it. Like, you know, I just can't do that. And, but I do think that it was the reason I done it was out of fear. Hmm. You know, I got generally afraid. across your your twenty years, uh, people obviously, and it it applies. Here's the weird thing about this question: is most people listening here eat meat, and and have. Uh, animals as part of their clothing and, and human beings, we are a dominant species and we industrialize animals for all sorts of things, including our sport. And so when that happens, unfortunately, human nature not being perfect, there can be mistreatment. Where are we at the moment, Davey, when it comes to concerns people have over the welfare of horses and the treatment of horses in this country? Well, it's just life itself is has got more difficult because of technology and you have to be seen now whereas before you just had to do it and and look after horses and and look after animals but now you have to video it and you have to show everybody that you're doing it and like as regards to when i started to now we're way we're after coming on leaps and bounds right. to the welfare of of the animal and the care of the animal and even technology being brought into the game like even the sake of bedding and, and allergies you know you know before horses bursting blood vessels you know the science of it now it could be because they have an allergy. So what people do is they build them houses 
that they can live outside and take shelter inside and and it's all about making them more comfortable like you 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 even the rugs that go under if you remember um the good filly in australia she used to travel with this big tight rug on her to keep her muscles you know to keep their muscles right from stop them from getting sore mm -hmm. um the x-rays the the scans the the in federal now they have this mri scanner um the vibrating floors the swimming pools um everything is 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 a step for them not to get injured the same way in sport that all of these teams are coming up with all of these things that that you the comfort for the player so we call the horse the player Mm. The comfort for the player is there the whole way through that they don't get sore, that their training that they go through doesn't affect them in their in their bodies. And oh, it's to, to see what I have seen from where I started to where it is now, the welfare for horses is 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 is, is risen dramatically. And then now as well that the aftercare, let them let them retire um, and or let them finish racing. But now there's another life for them. And if you think that they're well looked after in 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 when they're in training, you should see how well they're looked after outside of training. Like it's phenomenal the care these horses get, the time they get. Like I would say I have fifty odd horses here in the yard or mm. you know, around the farm. But there isn't a day that goes by that there isn't a human being goes into them to feed them. To look at them, to check them over, to 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 make sure that they're okay, you know. Um, and that's every day, Christmas day to whenever. It's all day long, you know. It's the it's on our mind the whole time. Mm -hmm. Is is the welfare of the of the animal, and that's all I can say. You know, you know the mistreatment of them. I, I, I don't see it I, because I don't, I wouldn't get involved in it. If I saw it, I, I would, it, it would take me, you know? Yes. Uh, Jim Bulger, who you know well, obviously, and you would have seen his comments uh, to the effect that there's a Lance Armstrong out there and that's made headlines and we've seen um, racing very much under the spotlight over the last year, 18 months. Uh, what is your sense of uh, the extent of drug cheating in Irish racing? Well, you see, I, I, I don't see it. I, you know, I haven't seen it. I like for you to, to administer it. Well, this is what I'm thinking for you to, there must be a needle going to a horse to administer the, the, the drugs. Would that be right? I presume they could take things orally as well various yeah, types I, of drugs you know so there'd be ways of doing it that wouldn't be visually detectable whatsoever you know or even uh, like the charles burns case his horse was given a sedative to, to run badly like racing is that mad sport where you can dope to win and dope to lose yeah, and you know yeah. so there, look i think the thing about racing is that suspicion has always it's been always there been you know like it, it it does feel very much a part of the game I, I if i'm being honest like that that murkiness is just you know, certain sports have it. Racing and things always had it. You know, winking a nod and make a few quid here on a lesser race. That's the way the get. You know, the world the, goes round. It's the same with jockeys. Like as you said, a wink and a nod, and he's doing this and they're doing that. I've I've never seen it. I've never been asked to do it. I've never been approached by anybody to do See, it. I, I I find I find that unbelievable. Yeah, never, ever, 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 ever. Like my dad, like. The one thing he drilled into me, you know, was, you know, you go to the races, you come home that night, and if you want to go back out, go back out and, and enjoy it. But, like, the whole betting side of it never entertained me. And I understand that it's there, and it's a part of the sport, and it's fine. Hmm. But to say that someone, like, how much could you get? Like, I, I don't understand. Like, if you're riding in a point to point, say, when I started off, like, how much is a person going to give me not to win the race? Is that going to outweigh? Like, it would have to be 
a substantial amount of money, yeah. you'd imagine. Yeah. So where is he going to generate? Where does he generate when there is 200 people at the point of point? Where does he generate the money to to to? How does it work? I, I, I you see. So, but that's point of points, right? So then you go to be a professional, and I get paid, you know, to ride a horse. So I get, you know, if I, if if the horse wins, depending on the, we'll say the worst race is worth, you know, eight or nine thousand to the winner. Um, so that's roughly, you know, just under a thousand euros including the riding fee. So he's going to have to, for me to ruin my career and get caught, mm. like what sort of figures do you think that I would take? Like, and then where is he going to generate the money to make him make this huge profit to sure. give me the, the, the money? I, I, the figures don't add up in my head that it can be possible to go on. Unless someone is happy of taking five hundred quid, do you know what I mean? But yeah, I mean maybe it's not so much. You're the, approach. The yeah, it's it's hard. Yeah, it, I, I, again, then, I understand the maths. Like I know, for instance, on Viking Horde, not to make it about Charles Burns, but just that's the only uh, factual case that I, I I've seen maybe in the last twelve months. For instance, you know he he Viking Horde drifted from four to one to eight to one before the race, and one bet was for thirty four thousand to win three thousand. So there were these things going on. Um, but on, on the doping side, yeah. Jim Bulger, I'm sure you've cornered Jim and said, Jim, Jim what's going on? Talk to me. No, I haven't. I haven't because, first of all, he probably has his, you know, he has his reasons behind it. But yeah. you see, they must be building, like this must be building up and building up to a huge crescendo that it, they have. It feels like Or it. else, yeah, well, you see, and the problem with that is, you know, you're, the damage you're doing along the way. So if there is this big, I, I just hope they come out with it mm. and, and stop it because the damage it's doing as the snowball is rolling down the hill, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But like it's dragging down people along the way with it that have nothing to do with the, the, the whole thing. And if they want to cure it, mm. just come out now, stop it, the, the, name the people, get them out of the sport and let the people that play fair play the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? But as someone said, like, like, so why don't they do that? Do you know what I mean? Why don't they, if they're so worried about, about the sport and the people that are playing it fair, that they don't just come and 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 cut it in the in the bud, stop it, get mm. the people that are are not playing fair out mm. because they are guilty. If they if they are guilty of something, get them out mm. and and ban them for whatever amount of time you need to ban them for. And get, and the people that are playing the game fair, let them play mm. on a level playing level playing field. Who is doping? I don't know. Okay. And until someone comes out and says he's doing it or he's doing it or she's doing it or they're doing it then all of this is pointless yeah it's very much in a watch this space territory at the moment uh, just a final thought then because you've been very good with your time your plans for the future i i you strike me as someone who's going to miss the adrenaline who uh, could get bored very easily get fed up very easily like I'd, I'd put a fiver each way that you might be riding at Cheltenham in 2024 at uh, the comeback. So how are you going to fill your, <laughs> how are you going to fill your time genuinely? Well, what, what age was Lester Piggott? He was 50 odd, was he, when he came made to come back? Yeah, yeah. What do you think? I, hey, I have to say, I, I, under, I understood what you were saying about not being able to ride as often as you liked and, and all that goes into it. But geez, I, I could almost imagine you just being a pick and choose the big ones, the high caliber races, another year or two. No, 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 <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. You're, you're um, going to miss it a lot though, aren't you? I am. I, I, I love riding. I love, and I can still ride. I still ride with the lads and, and, and things. Um, and I'll, I'll ride out in gardens and things like that. So I, I love riding. And, uh, but you know, I've, I've just, I, I've, 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 I have an uncanny way of just switching off and move on to something else. I'm, 
I'm happy I made the decision and you know I can still if I want to go to the field and jump over a load of hedges and get an adrenaline rush that way but I'm just happy I'm just happy I get my adrenaline rush watching the young lads do you know what I mean okay. and yeah. so what will be your average day do you think going forward um early <laughs> up early um you know, we have, to, we have a lot of horses here to feed and there's a lot of work to be done on the yard and I like still want to go to the gardens and ride out and okay. we'll take it as a week. Like, yeah, I still want to go racing. Um, um, I, I watch a lot of racing. I enjoy, I enjoy, I, I, I prep a lot of horses for sale. Well, not prepping for the sales, but I, I love going to the sales. I enjoy that side of it. I enjoy the breeding side of it. I enjoy rearing horses, you know, different different things. I like to watch horses grow, you know, and and try and see if you can breed the next champion or something like that, you know. Very good. Well, listen, I read out the kind of broad history of your career at the start of this interview. I mean, it's been an amazing career. I, I presume you retire a happy man. Oh, I'm happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy. I've, 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 I've done more than I've ever, ever thought I would. I dreamt about it for sure. I did dream about it. I dreamed about doing it all. And uh, I have, I have, I, I've loved every minute of it. And I've loved it till the very last day, you know, and I, I still love it. I still, and I think that's the beauty of retiring while I was enjoying it. I wanted to keep loving it. I didn't want to fall out of love with the game. So yeah, it's great. I'm delighted. Well, listen, Davy Russell, uh, congratulations. Congratulations, genuine, genuinely on, on one of the great Irish sporting careers. It's going to be remembered for a long time. So, uh, good man, put the feet up and, and good to see you go out in your own terms. Thanks, Davey. Thanks, Merlin. Thanks for everything.